Hello everyone and welcome to Nelson Metaphysics, where we elaborate on everyday conversations that people shy away from. Now on this week's podcast, we're going to be continuing with the 48 Laws of Power. And today we're going to continue with Laws 26 to 30. Now just a quick reminder for everyone. I'm reviewing the 48 Laws of Power in its true nature. I'm not saying that I follow these laws, that I believe in these laws, that I do anything that these laws tell me. I don't live my life by these laws. Now, there are some laws that I agree with, and there are some laws that I disagree with. But in reality, I'm going to be talking about the true nature of each individual law. Now, to begin, Law 26, titled this, Keep Your Hands Clean. And it reads this, You must seem a paragon of civility and efficiency. Your hands are never soiled by mistakes and nasty deeds. Maintain such a spotless appearance by using others as scapegoats and cat paws to disguise your involvement. Now over here with this law, our main concern here is ensuring that anything that we do, anything that we affiliate ourselves with, we do it correct. This law is about coming correct. Keep your hands as clean as possible, meaning don't do something that can tarnish your name. Don't do something that could come from left field and make you be in a bad position with whatever the case may be you're investing in. Whatever the case may be you are following, you believe in, or you're pursuing. If you're conducting business for someone, In a business setting, if you're coming up with a game plan, if you're the one in charge of that game plan, plan, all of a sudden, you start doing some shady stuff. Now, not only are you ruining your image, but you're also now dirtying your hands. Doing stuff you shouldn't be doing because it's going to make the team look bad or it's going to make you look bad. And please do not dirty your hands in a way where not only does it make you look bad, it makes your team look bad. So if you if you are in a predicament, if, if you are in a predicament where you have to dirty your hands for whatever the case may be, remember this, dirty your hands by yourself. Do not dirty your hands and bring anyone else with you and whatever the case may be you're dirtying your hands with. Even in the relationship setting, don't do something that will cause your partner to look at you and lose trust in you. That's not what we want. You go out, you do the wrong stuff, you get caught cheating. Why? Why you? What were you? Why would you even cheat in the first place? I mean, obviously we're selfish as human beings, but you know what that comes with. Once you dirty your hands in that relationship, your partner was never will will never look at you the same. They may forgive you but they are not going to forget. If you're lucky enough that they forgive you. And in a business setting, once you ruin your image, guess what? People aren't going to look at you the same. People are not going to come after you the same. People will never sit and say, hey, this person is someone reliable. Even if you bring results at the end of the day, they're going to look at you as someone that's not reliable, as someone they cannot trust. When you dirty your hands, you ruin trust. When you ruin trust, people are not going to come at you for money. People are not going to come at you for a game plan. People are not going to come at you for your connections. Why? Because they will be afraid of what you're capable of doing. And that is doing something that may cause you to dirty your hands. Now, we can't lie. We've all been in positions where we got to dirty our hands. Especially if you're in the streets. If you're in the streets, you're going to dirty your hands regardless. Because in the streets, you can't be in the streets without dirtying your hands. But if you're going to dirty your hands, do it right. If you're going to do something you're not supposed to, do it right. Listen, my best advice is this. If you're going to do something you're not supposed to, make sure you do it right. Because at the end of the day, if you're not doing that right, you're going to get caught up. You're going to get in the mess. Your hands are going to be dirty. You're going to get it caught with a record. Now, people are not going to look at you the same. 
people are going to say, you know what? I remember him from when he did X, Y, and Z. It'll be two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line. Once you ruin your name with something, it follows you forever. I've seen people do things they shouldn't be doing. In 2009, 2010, and today in 2022, it still follows them. They might have done it in their early years. And now you're in your 30s and you're still caught up with that image because people can find what you did. We live in a day of, we live in a day and era where the digital world is here. This is the digital era, meaning that everything you do is copied. Everything that you do will be printed forever online on the infinite pages of the internet. So guess what? Make sure that whatever you do, you do it right. If you got to dirty your hands, do it right. If you got to do something you're not supposed to, do it right. You know why? Because it will follow you. And if you do it right and you get away with it, guess what? You're going to have a group of people that's going to come look for you and say, we're that group of people that likes to get our hands dirty. Now what? Now you're going to do business dirty in your hands at all times because you're good at getting away with it. If you're going to dirty your hands, do it right. If you're going to do something you're not supposed to, do it right. You understand? Don't do something that's going to get you caught up in a mess and now you lose everything. That's not how we roll. Okay. The reversal to this. The cat's paw and the scapegoat must be used with, with extreme caution and delicacy. They are like screens that hide your own involvement in dirty work from the public. If at any moment the screen is lifted and you are seen as the manipulator, the puppet master, the whole dynamic turns around. Your hands will be seen everywhere and you will be blamed for misfortunes you may have had nothing to do with. Once the truth is revealed, events will snowball beyond your control. You are part of this game plan you set up. You make up the scheme. Now you get caught with the scheme and you're all screwed. We all know about the major crypto scheme that went on last year with SafeMoon. SafeMoon was advertised absolutely everywhere across America. SafeMoon was advertised with celebrities, influencers, anybody with a digital media presence. They promised that they were going to do so many changes, but nothing was ever fulfilled. Nothing ever fell through until at the end, the coin itself was a rug pulled. Now, that's a valuable lesson there. The people who were involved with the advertisements of SafeMoon got a really bad rap, especially those celebrities. I'm not going to name any of them because honestly, it's none of my business. But at the end of the day, you guys can look that up yourselves and realize how these influencers and celebrities and these public, you know, these people that the public know about had to come out and apologize for what they did. Say, the, the leaders of SafeMoon manipulated the market, manipulated these leaders, manipulated so many things so that at the end of the day, they rug pulled the coin and make their money. And that concludes Law 26. Law 27. Play on people's need to believe to create a cult-like following. This is important. People have an overwhelming desire to believe in something. Become the focal point of such desire by offering them a cause, a new faith to follow, keep your words vague but full of promises, emphasize enthusiasm over rationality and clear thinking. Give your new disciples rituals to perform. Ask them 
to make sacrifices on your behalf in the absence of organized religion and grand causes, your new belief system will bring you untold power. Now, I'm going to be speaking on this on very general terms, but creating a cult-like following is literally an art in itself. That's literally something that takes complete major skill to execute successfully. Because at the end of the day, to create a cult like following, you have to be a master of manipulation. When you manipulate people at a mass level, you have to have great presentation skills. You got to have great, you know, manipulation skills. You got to have great people skills. You got to have, you just have to be that person that people look up to, people desire to be, people desire to follow. You literally, you literally have to sell a dream to everybody that becomes part of your cult to execute this successfully, of course. Now, I don't follow any cults. I'm not part of any cults. But at the end of the day, just keep yourself aware of what these cults may look like so you don't, so you don't get caught in a mess. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain these five steps. And these five steps apply to any form of group you're trying to be, you're trying to create, basically. Forget about you trying to be part of. These five steps, be, these five steps become a part of the group that you're trying to create. And we're going to begin with this, step one. Keep it vague, keep it simple. Meaning, leave it open for mistakes. Leave it open for questioning. Leave it open so that people can come back and say, this made me better. I did this wrong, but now I, can, now I did it better. That alone brings this joy in people, this sense of successfulness, this sense of overcoming an obstacle, because you're able to manipulate them in such a way that you're playing these mind games with them. It's all about getting in people's minds. Once you get into people's minds, you have total control of how they will react. And that's power. Power is controlling how someone reacts to what you say. And if you're able to make them react the way you want them to react, that's the absolute pinnacle point of power. There's no, there's no power greater than making someone react the way that you want them to react. Keep that in mind. That was a gem. Step two. Emphasize the visual and essential over the intellectual, meaning that you have to sell a dream. You have to sell a dream so great that they feel it throughout their entire bodies, no matter what. You sell a dream so much that people, listen, there are certain quotes that make people want to do some crazy stuff. And, that, and, and those crazy actions that they do is part of the step where they emphasize in the visual and essential of the individuals and the mass following that they have. That's something you have to keep in consideration when creating a cult like following. Now, step three, borrow the forms of organized religion to structure the group. Now, religion comes in many forms shapes and beliefs but religion is well organized and basically what this step is telling you to do take the organization skills that religion have to create your cult to create your following why because in whatever you do in life even if it's in business you have to have organization organization skills is a is a, is a plus in order for me to sit down and have this podcast, I have to have major organization skills. I'm an audio engineer. So I have to learn how to make sure all my cables are in check. I have to make sure that my computer is up to date. All my software is okay. I have the latest software. I have the software that's best for editing the audio of this video. I have the software that's best for editing this video itself. I have the proper angles and cameras and backgrounds to make sure that I'm able to grasp the attention of my viewers. I have to keep doing that. But that takes proper organizing. 
And when you have, you whenever you're creating a cult or a following, you have to be compelling to that cult. You have to be compelling to the people that you're trying to create and be part of your following. Now, step four, disguise your source of income. Why? Because you can be broke and still look, look like a million bucks. It's all about how you present yourself. That's presentation skills. You can have no money and you, and you can seem like you're the person that knows the most, has the most and everything by the way you carry yourself. I've seen some very wealthy people. I've seen some millionaires that look like a regular Joe, that dress regular. I've seen millionaires that drive a Nissan Rogue with duct tape on their bumper. Yes. And these people are loaded, filled with wealth, own property, different businesses. I've seen it with my own eyes. Because you always have to put yourself in that predicament where you have to make sure that your image is secure. And, you, and, and the reason why you want to hide your income is because people are very judgmental. And they will judge you based on how much money you make. Now look at you and be like, oh, you make, what, 100K? Get out of my face. But if you look like you make a million, people will be like, whoa, he's on to something. You see the difference? Why? Because you're manipulating people. You're creating an image that's not real. You're creating a false reality. It's a cult-like following. Whatever you're doing is a false reality in the first place. So it starts with yourself. The image you give off is a false reality. Now, the final step. Set up an us versus them dynamic. Meaning that if you're not with us, you're against us. Simple as, simple as that. If you're not with me, you're against me. That's what that means. And when you create that image, people are going to feel like this is where we belong. You're creating a sense of belonging, a sense of community. That's when the community begins to become an actual community, when they feel like it's us against them. It's us against the world. It's us against the outsiders. This is, it may sound a little intense. It may sound crazy. But we actually see this in everyday life. We keep our mouth shut. We keep our mouth shut every single day. Our, our cult like following could be a group of friends that don't allow nobody to be a part of their group of friends but those people alone. That alone in itself can be a cult like following. And anybody who tries to be part of them is seen like an outsider. Listen, I don't make this stuff up. I'm only explaining this law in its true nature. That's all I'm doing. I don't believe in cults. I don't follow any codes. I just like following everyday life and whatever life throws at me. Whatever obstacle comes my way, I overcome it. And I don't do it by creating no code. And even though I may be a bit educated on how to explain this, it doesn't mean that this is what I do on a daily basis. And this is not what I'm doing. Not at all. But sometimes you're gonna create a code like finally, you know why? Because you better make some money. You want to make some money. At the end of the day, it's all about finances. How do you create a cult-like following? For what reason exactly? I'm going to give you a very day-to-day -day reason. The crypto market. How many... You know how easy it is to create a coin? I can sit down and create a coin within half an hour to 45 minutes, upload it on the exchange. Now it's on Uniswap. It's on MetaMask, a whole bunch of other places, and you can trade it. And you know what I could do? I could shut down the coin whenever I want. Now, if I'm able to do that, and I have that type of skill and knowledge, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to maximize my profit. If I maximize my profit, that means that I'm going to create a YouTube channel, social media presence. I'm going to promote my coin, get as many people to follow, have people invest. The moment that I, people invest enough, if they invest 10K, 100K, or a million dollars, I'll rug pull the coin. And guess what? It's a decentralized market, meaning that easily get away with it. Simple as that. Nobody told you to invest. You do it on your own terms, but you did. You got caught up in someone's cult-like following. And now you lost money. You know how many friends I have that have been rug pulled? 
a lot. Thousands and thousands of dollars, thousands, hundreds of thousands of thousands of dollars lost forever, unrecoverable or unable to recover. I don't even know if that was a word, but you get the point. And that's, you know, that's, that's an example for a cult like following. A cult like following doesn't have to be, oh my goodness, I'm going to create this religion. I'm going to create this stuff so people could act a certain way. No, a cult like following, so it could be a scheme. You create a scheme that's it. That, that, that right there is a form of cult like following. Now, the reversal to this law. One reason to create a following is that a group is often easier to deceive than an individual and turns over to you that, that much more power. This comes, however, with a danger. If at any moment the group sees through you, you will find yourself facing not one deceived soul, but an angry crowd that will tear you to pieces as vividly as it once followed you. Now, this is the reason why, you know, this is the reason why I, I appreciate the story of Jesus. Of Jesus Christ, of course. You know, I'm going to take it a bit biblical here. The reason why I appreciate Jesus so much is because back in those times, if you read the stories of when he was alive, he wasn't changing lives one group setting at a time. He was doing one person at a time. And that's beautiful. And even, doing, even though he was doing the one person at a time, he still gained some sort of loyal following at a mass level. But he was doing it one at a time, one at a time. And I appreciate that. That alone shows me that, that alone, not, not shows me, but makes me feel like Jesus wasn't trying to deceive anyone. He was being authentic. He was out here changing lives one at a time. What is one life gonna do for you? What, is, what, what are you gonna benefit from that? But he saw, he saw the important, importance of that. He saw that in its true nature. He saw that, that's right there is the most purest form of changing people's lives for the better. He sat down and he changed it one life at a time. And that grew into the mass following that he has today. And the different forms of beliefs that came from that and came from those stories. Now, back to this reversal. You have to be careful when you create a cult like following because the moment people see through you, they're going to destroy you one group setting at a time. I'm gonna give you a perfect example right now. There was a guy, somebody, there was a jewelry store, a jeweler on Fordham Road in the Bronx that was receiving fake Rolexes. But the jeweler thought that they were real Rolexes per se. I'm not going to say the name. I know the guy, but I'm not going to say the name. What happened here is that unfortunately those Rolexes were not real. He was buying them on wholesale for original authentic price and selling it at retail price and above market price because he was selling it, he was a third party. So of course, if you're going to sell it outside of the Rolex store, you have to sell it at a higher price than the actual market. Now, this is where he went wrong. He sold it to the hood. That was okay. People in the hood that have bread go out buy a Rolex. However, one person went to a Rolex store. They was like, yeah, I got a Rolex, you know? Because this, this is how we hood people are, you feel me? We always trying to show show out for some sort of reason. I don't know. I don't even know why. Yeah, I got a Rolex here. And my and my Rolex is real. Check it. He took out his watch. He checked it. They said, oh, no, this is not real. The store gave him proof and the reason why it's not real. That person went back to the hood, told all his buddies, and a group of people went back to the store. Like here. That jeweler had to close the store down because they were after him. Because now he had to pay back hundreds of thousands of dollars instantly. That's one hell of a capital to lose from one minute to the next. Not borrow money, capital. Because you have to give that up cash. 
you know, so be careful. The man thought that he had a good flow. He created this cult like following. He had his target market. His target market came and invested in him. And guess what? They felt deceived, so they came after him. And that concludes this law. Law 28, enter action with boldness. If you are unsure of a course of action, do not attempt it. Your doubts and hesitation will infect your execution. Timidity is dangerous. Better to enter with boldness. Any mistakes you commit through audacity are easily corrected with more audacity. Everyone admires the bold. No one honors the timid. Me in particular, I'm a very bold person. When I talk to people, I have no hair on my tongue. I tell people what it is, how it is, how it gets done. It's simple. And if you don't like it, get away from me. I don't need you in my life. I don't need you around me. You know why? Because I'm about executing. I'm about getting to the bag. I'm about doing what I got to do for everyday life. You feel me? And I attack everyday life with all the boldness in the world and no hesitation. When you hesitate, you cannot execute. When you can't execute, you can't gain the results that you desire. When you cannot gain those results, that leads you to failure. Simple as that. Easy, easy math, simple equation. Don't forget. Boldness and hesitation. A brief psychological comparison of boldness and hesitation elicit very different psychological responses in their targets. Hesitation puts obstacles in your path. Boldness eliminates them. Again, hesitation puts obstacles in your path and boldness eliminates them. Meaning that when you hesitate to do something, you won't execute properly. Boldness and hesitation. I'm going to give you a brief psychological comparison of boldness and hesitation. Hesitation puts obstacles in your path. Boldness eliminates them. That's a gem that I want you to take home. Hesitation puts obstacles in your path and boldness eliminates them. I want to give some examples of both boldness and hesitation. I'm going to start with this. The bolder the lie, the better. People who lie and they're bold about the lie and they have full confidence of whatever lie they give you, guess what? More people will probably believe those lies than the people who don't believe them lies. And when you have full faith, people are going to say, wow, this guy seems like he knows what he's talking about. Simple as that. Continuing, lions circles the hesitant prey. A lion will keep an eye on their prey. An eye on their prey. And the moment they're hesitant, they attack. The moment you turn your back, they attack. And turning your back on a lion is a form of hesitation. So if you turn your back on anything, some people will are quickly to attack you. So you got to be on point. You got to be bold. You got to print whatever it is that you got in your head, whatever it is that you want to release out there and let the world know. You got to make that printed, not disappear in midair. No, you got to have that printed in people's minds and people's souls, throughout people's bodies. Why? Because they need to understand. And boldness. Boldness strikes fear. And fear creates authority. You see this a lot with certain pets. You know, 
people have there are certain pets you know like a pit bull pit bull are very beautiful animals they're awesome awesome dogs but some pit bull they want to make sure that the owner is still got that level of authority so they'll test you and if you if, if you fail that test they'll act like they own you instead of the other way around where they're supposed to follow you you're the one that feeds them takes care of them make sure they're good you bathe them they know that you're their master but guess what a pit bull will test you and if you feel that test oh guess what they will definitely run your world now going halfway with a half heart digs the deeper grave again going halfway with a half heart digs a deeper grave in the, in this in this sense I'm going to talk about the action of pursuit of a certain individual you wish to become your partner when you're pursuing someone and you're pursuing them with a halfway heart Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, you're gonna, not only are you going to give yourself a headache in that process, but you go, you're going you're to hurt someone in return. And one thing I've learned in this world, whatever goes around comes around. There are things. Listen, I've went through things throughout my life where I automatically assume that I didn't do anything wrong, and I'm questioning why all these negative things are happening to me. And it's not until like 10 years down the line that I find out, listen, I hurt someone in a very bad way that I never wished to hurt them. You know what happens then? It's okay. Now I feel okay for whatever the case may be that I went through in my life. Cuz I deserve what I went through. Cuz I caused someone pain. I mean, I caused someone pain. I call someone some form of misery and I created a wound. And if I created a wound, I deserve a wound. So, at the end of the, at the end of the day, I'm grateful for whatever obstacles and downfalls that I received because I deserved it. So, never go in half with a halfway heart into anything. because it's not going to work out for you. We got to be on point. We got to make sure we do what we do the right way. I'm about doing what I do the right way. You understand? No matter how real it gets, we got to do what we do the correct way. Hesitation. Hesitation creates gaps. Boldness obliterates them. I like that. Boldness obliterates hesitation. You understand when you when you hesitate, like I said earlier, you create a gap for failure, and in that gap, in the split second, you lose everything. If you're playing, if you're gambling, you're playing poker, you will lose. If you hesitate, people study you, people look at your movements, your eyes, your eyebrows. your pupils your body language your shoulders positioning of your elbow if it shifts all of a sudden they look at your posture how much your back was arched compared to before you had a certain hand and now you have this new hand people analyze everything from a to z when you're playing poker so they can know what cards to play So play your cards right. And this is my last point for this. Audacity separates you from the herd. Boldness gives you presence and makes you seem larger than life. You got to make sure you attack everything. Absolutely everything. As boldly as you possibly can. Have confidence, have faith. Have that investment in whatever it is that you're doing. because you want to make sure you're official in every single thing that you do 
Me, for example, I may not be perfect, but I try to be as official as I can. You understand? No matter what the case may be. I fail, but I overcome every failure. I've hit my downfalls, I come back right up. And it's okay to hit your downfall, because from hitting rock bottom, the, the only place you can go is upwards. And never forget that. They reverse it to this. Boldness should never be the strategy behind all your actions. It is a tactical instrument to be used at the right moment. Plan and think ahead and make the final element the bold move that will bring you success. For when it's time for you to execute, execute with absolute boldness. When it's time for you to prove a point, prove your point with absolute boldness. When it's time for you to really let people know what's going on, how you feel, do it at the right time with absolute boldness. And let me tell you something. Only because you're bold does not mean you're confident. Only because you're confident does not mean you're bold. You can be bold and have no confidence and vice versa. You can be absolutely confident and not be bold in anything that you do. Never forget. That concludes Law 28. Law 29, plan all the way to the end. The ending is everything. Plan all the way to it, taking into account all the possible consequences, obstacles, and twists of fortune that might reverse your hard work and give the glory to others. By planning to the end, you will not be overwhelmed by circumstances and you will know when to stop. Gently guide fortune and help determine the future by thinking far ahead. I'm going to say this. I agree and disagree with this law. I'm going to tell you why. The plan, the part where I partially agree with is when you plan for all the consequences and obstacles and any twist of fortune that might come your way. You can't really plan to the end. In the business setting, you can't plan to the end. Unless it's a business that is meant to be liquidated after a certain amount of period, then you're able to plan to the end. But how many businesses are like that? And if you're into that kind of business, this law applies to you 100%. And you should agree with this law 100%. But in real life, in everyday life, because I'm applying these laws to everyday life, when it comes to everyday life, you cannot plan to the end. When you're coming up with a business plan, you can't initially plan to the end because things change. When you are pursuing someone for the sake of love, there is absolutely no such thing for planning to the end. Now, it's a beautiful thing. Let me tell you something. It's a beautiful thing when you have love on your side. And it feels really good for your partner when you plan for any possible consequences, any possible obstacles, and you try your best to avoid any type of, mis any type of misfortunes. That's beautiful. You're doing what you got to do as, as an individual. I commend you. You understand? I'm not like that. You know, I've never been like that. As of recent, I'm, I've been like that, you know, because in my life, I'm at a point in my life where I found someone that's worth my investment, and that's okay. But my entire life, I was never like that. I never gave everything my 100%. I never focused on every single obstacle or consequence. I never, I never really gave a crap. Now, obviously, I do, because I have someone that I, I, I could actually value. I have someone that, okay, now this is worth my time. I've been through everything I've been through in the past, so I can sit down and say that this is where my energy belongs. But you can't plan to the end. When you're creating, when you're starting a new business, for all my new business owners, all my small business owners, I commend you, I applaud you, and I hope nothing but success for you guys. And anyone who is trying to open up any sort of business, remember this. Plan absolutely everything you can possibly plan. Leave nothing behind. Think of every single scenario 
play every scenario in your head. Write it down. And, and within every scenario, play every possible way you're able to attack those scenarios and create every possible outcome for each single scenario. Think of every positive and negative scenario and sit down and write the best possible outcome to attack those scenarios. That's my best advice for you. You do things with the sake of fortune being on your side, but you do things to make sure that things are being done correctly. That's how you achieve success. Success doesn't equal fortune at all times. What comes after success sometimes, what comes after making sure that your game plan is executed correctly can lead you to a great amount of financial fortune. But at the end of the day, what matters is that every single plan you create is literally executed accordingly. I'm going to end it here. The reversal to this law. It is a cliche among strategies that in your plan, you must include alternatives and have a degree of flexibility. That is certainly true, but if you are locked into a plan too rigidly, you will be unable to deal with sudden shifts of fortune. Once you have examined the future possibilities and decided on your target, you must build in alternatives and be open to new routes towards your goal. Now, you see this reversal? That is the reason why I mentioned that whatever it is that you're getting yourself into, think of every single scenario, positive and negative, and try to create every single possible way you can attack those scenarios for the best possible outcome. That's my best advice. That is my best, you know, general statement that I can give you based on this law. I don't agree with planning all the way to the end unless, of course, you're getting yourself into a type of business that you're going to liquidate in a certain amount of period. Or, again, if, you know, you're the type of person that you plan on being with this girl or this man for only X amount of time, like, okay, I'm only going to mess with them until, you know, 90 days or so. So you plan those 90 days and you make the best out of it. I mean, it, it, it seems messed up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie. It seems messed up. But some people are like that. And if they move like that, at least you understand how they're moving. My point here is to allow you to understand how people move. And that concludes Law 29. And we'll be leading to our final law, Law 30. Law 30, make your accomplishments seem effortless. Your actions must seem natural and executed with ease. All the toil and practice that goes into them and also all the clever tricky or, or all the clever tricks must be concealed. When you act effortlessly as if you could do much more, avoid the temptation of revealing how hard you work. It only raises questions Teach no one your tricks or they will be used against you. Now, this law is about deceiving. Deceiving people on how hard you work. You know, in life, everything that you do takes hard work. Simple as it, simple as it is. Everything that you do and anything that you become part of takes hard work. But sometimes people do it effortlessly. For example, I'm a, I'm a pianist and keyboardist. I've been playing piano for about 15 years and I play it very flawlessly I can sit down I can play whatever comes to my mind I can play by ear I can sight read to a certain degree obviously because I don't practice sight reading every day because that's just boring if you ask me honestly I'm more of a jazz musician I play very you know freely I like to improvise a lot and as a jazz musician there are a lot of things that I will sit down and do flawlessly that people will be like, what the heck is going on? Like, how can he do something like that? Because a lot of people who don't understand jazz will think, it, oh, that's cool, it's pretty normal, it sounds great. But you also have to take into account all the years that I've spent practicing. There was a period in my life where I practiced the piano for eight hours a day. 
for years. For years, I practiced for eight hours a day, and I only slept four hours a day. For years, I did that. That is the reason why today I'm capable of playing flawlessly. People may not, people don't know about how crazy that is, how obsessive that looks like. Imagine someone sitting down in front of a piano for eight hours in a day. That was my life for several years. People didn't understand or see that. And then when I sit down on a plane, I'm like, they'd be like, oh, that sounds so beautiful. That sounds great. Awesome. I wish I could do that. Well, I went through a lot to sit down and be able to do what I do. I went, I went through a lot to be able to achieve the certain skill level that I achieved. You have to take that into account. Of course, I sit down, I play, it's all good and great. We're not having conversations about how long I've been playing or how I did it. No, it's all about, oh, you play good. Thank you, I appreciate it. Appreciate your words, your kind words. I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. And that's a way of making certain accomplishments seem effortless. You put somebody on and they'll turn against you. Sometimes you put somebody on and they'll rob you, they'll steal from you, they'll turn against you. And now, what does that make you? What does that make you? It makes you look like you took a loss makes you look like an idiot. It kind of like, it's like, wow. I mean, the other person obviously has a ton of their name. They ruined their image. But now you also taking the L. So you got to be careful about how you, you know, the image you give off to people. Don't allow people to understand like, oh, I did this and X, Y, and Z to get here. Because now people will take your ideas and use it against you. They reverse it to this. The secrecy with which you surround your actions must seem lighthearted in spirit. A zeal to conceal your work creates an unpleasant, almost paranoid impression. You are taking the game too seriously. Meaning, don't be too mysterious. Like, that's just, if you're too mysterious about certain things, you're gonna look like a weirdo. You look like a creep. Honestly. Just have a balance. Understand? Show people that certain type of people deserve your energy and your time. That's how I feel. People don't have to know your every move or how you got there. You understand? Just so much, listen, I'm gonna tell you this. There's enough abundance in this planet for everyone who lives on, the, on this planet to be able to have whatever they want. But there are so many people that have so much more than others that it robs people and be able to have what they want. And guess what? Guess what that happens? Guess what that creates? Poverty, low incomes, a low quality life of living. And we have to escape that. We don't have time for that. We don't, we can't sit down and say, hey. It is what it is. No, we have to prevail. We have to overcome. At the end of the day, you have to prevail. You have to overcome all those obstacles and get yourself in a better place. We live in a world where there's enough abundance for whatever the case it is. But as long as you're somewhere where you're able to get to that place to achieve your goals, You'll be able to accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish, no matter how, how much hard work goes into it. Just don't forget that. And remember, there's always a way to get better every single day. Every day I wake up, I'm a better person. I know I'm a better person. I learn. Every single day, I learn something new. I force myself to learn something new every single day. So I make sure that Every single day, I wake up a better person. And that concludes Law 30, and that concludes the podcast for today. Everybody, don't forget to tune in. I have all the markers for each chapter in the description. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. And I thank you for tuning in. Until next week. <laughs> <laughs>